It turns out that because transition metals, um, the differences between their energy levels lie at just the perfect range, they tend to be very colorful. Now, a lot of them don't have color, but there is a number that do. And it's actually pretty unusual when a complex or any compound has color, because most complexes or compounds are white or colorless. Um, so it's pretty unusual when they do have color. Transition metals have a lot of color. That's why, uh, if you ever watched fireworks before, transition metals are what make the colors in fireworks, um, or primarily. So first, where does color come from? Well, if, if you imagine, uh, let's just draw octahedral CFT. If you have an electron at a lower energy level, and you put in energy and it jumps up to the higher energy level and then ultimately falls back down to the bottom. So let me say that again. You put in energy, the electron goes up. When it falls back down, it gives off light. So the falling down from a higher orbital to a lower orbital, that's where color comes from. It doesn't have to be visible color, but some sort of or visible light, but some sort of light. Whenever it's in the visible region of 400 to 700 nanometers, then we as humans can see visible light. Okay, so there is a formula here, but we're pretty much never going to use it, but we need to look at it. Uh, we won't use it mathematically, I should say. You hopefully vaguely recall this formula, or have seen it before, or this brings back really bad memories. Energy is hc over lambda, which is Planck's constant times the speed of light, so the numerator is a constant, over lambda, the wavelength. So in our terms, energy for transition metals is just delta, which is the change in energy between two orbital levels, but we just call it delta in this chapter. And I'm just going to say this is proportional to 1 over the wavelength because H and C are constant, so I'll just say proportional to. What that means is if energy is high, wavelength is low, or vice versa. If wavelength is low, energy is high. Now, knowing that, let me explain this section. And if you read this section in your Petrucci book, I think it is utterly confusing. So I, this is one of those sections I would not read in the textbook, or you'll go crazy. Here's what you need to know. This is what's called the color wheel. This will be given on the exam. So you will have this, you just need to know how to use it. And this color wheel, I guess if you're an artist, this looks familiar, will tell you uh, how to draw things. Now you see the colors in the middle. Uh, see the numbers on the outside? Those are wavelengths. So that's wavelengths in nanometers. 400 nanometers, uh, if I lit, and then goes around to 800 uh, nanometers, getting out of the red range. Okay. One other thing about the color wheel. If you see green, like most plants you see are green, that means that plant is absorbing red light. So really the plant is red as far as absorption, but as far as reflection, what you see uh, is green. So that's how the color wheel works. Uh, one side is what you see, the exact opposite side is what is absorbed. All right, so that's what the color wheel is. Uh, now let's try to see how this works. Uh, and we need to see how this works by doing uh, a little example. OK, here I have two complexes for you. Uh, one is the CrH2O6 Cl3. Um, what would that be? That name is hexa aqua chromium 3 chloride. So Cl is the counter ion. That's violet. Is this next one, so it's Na3CrOH6. This would be, oh my goodness, <laughs> sodium hexa aqua uh, chromate 3. Sodium hexa aqua chromate. Oh, thank you, not aqua. That's hydro. Hexahydroxo 
Uh, uh, Chromie 3. Thanks for fixing it. Yeah, uh, I got too excited about water. Okay, so if that one's violet. Is this one blue or red? Okay? Let me show you how this works. What you do, and you need the spectrochemical series to be able to solve this problem. Um, So we've got the Cr H2O 6 Cl3. We've got the Na3. Na is a counterion. CrOH6. Looking at the ligands, these are both octahedral because both have six ligands. I want to find out which is the stronger field ligand, water or hydroxide. Well, if you look here on the spectrochemical series, both water and hydroxide are weak field ligands, but water is slightly stronger than hydroxide. You see that? Slightly higher on the thing. So we want to remember that. Let me write that down. This is a slightly higher delta than this, so I'll just indicate that with the arrows. So that means if the top one has the higher delta, the bottom one has the higher lambda. So you, what I always do when I'm doing these color problems, oh, it's kind of right there. I, you go first to the spectrochemical series. Which one has the higher delta? Because delta and lambda are inversely proportional, lambda is the opposite. So then you figure out lambda. After you get to this point, you go to your color wheel. So our color wheel, remembering this. Okay, so here's our color wheel. The first one with water, it said, is violet. Okay? Now, that one has a, the one with water ligands is a lower lambda. If I increase lambda to go to hydroxy, I'm increasing my wavelength number. So I'm going from 400 up to higher 400. Does that make sense? So, lambda increases. Remember lambda, here's a low, here's high. So lambda is increasing for the second one. So let's go to the higher lambda. It's blue. Now technically when you do these, you actually do it through absorption, but you get the same answer. So I don't teach it that way anymore. But technically what you would actually do is say, okay, uh, it's absorbing yellow and then uh, you're going to a higher wavelength, orange, so it's absorbing orange or you see blue. So technically you go through that process, but it's just as easy to say wavelength goes up, it's blue. And that's it. Okay? Any questions on that? That's how you tell colors. Oh, yeah, so, sure. So since um, the top one is only Oh, yeah. I, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Uh, I think your question worded in a different way. How do you know how high up the color will go? Because you can keep going up to red. Essentially, we're going to give you problems where you just go up to the next color. You, we're not going to do any calculations such that you figure how much higher lambda is. So, that, oh, maybe you skip two colors. So what we're going to do is you're basically, if you're given, oh, the original one's blue, what's the other one? You're choosing between violet and green. So the type of problems I'll give you will not cause the color to vary more than one slot or pie piece on the color wheel. Where you're totally true, right, uh, and if it does, it'll be a different kind of question. We'll do a question like that a little later. But uh, we're just going to keep it really simple and go up one, or go down one, pi uh, on the color.